Boom! What's going on everyone? It's Steve Larson. Welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. And today I'm going to teach you guys some of the uh, top lessons I've learned in the last three years. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today. And now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. What's up, guys? Hey, I didn't know what else to call this episode. Um, but uh, I, so I just barely did my event Offermind. And as I started out, um, I knew that when I started the event, just because I've been coaching a lot of people on this, I knew that I needed to start by walking through some mentality things, which is not something that I normally would do. Um, and so what I decided to do was I decided to, to sit back and, and start thinking through a lot of the lessons I've learned that have actually made the big difference. Now, I'm not talking about marketing lessons in this, okay? A few of them might be a little bit in that realm, but a lot of it, what I've found is that if somebody doesn't have these things uh, inside of, of their funnel or inside their own brain, a lot of times their business doesn't do very well. So I thought I'd walk through, these are seven of the most life-altering lessons I've learned like in the last three years, especially when it comes to uh, being able to function as the entrepreneur inside your business. So if it's cool, I'm gonna walk on through each one of these real quick here. And uh, there's a little story with each one of them. But um, uh, anyway, I taught these to, I was a few, a few weeks ago, I went and I, and, and uh, Russell was doing this big push for, uh, um, was it Cyber Monday and uh, Black Friday? And I was listening, I was watching the way that a lot of people were reacting to the Funnel Hacking Live tickets being sold right now. And I was like, dude, let me come teach some things to, to these people to help them actually get $2,000 in a day. And so, it was really cool, guys. I woke up uh, the next morning and I saw on my phone an email with Russell's name and my name on there. And I gotta tell you, it meant a lot to me because I've been pushing really hard in the game. And to see that actually really meant a lot. Um, uh, to see that he had blasted out his whole list like that. So what happened was I went and I and I, I went for three and a half hours and I started by teaching uh, these seven lessons. And as I taught the seven lessons, it was really funny what happened. There was a group of people who... Uh, really appreciated what I was going through. It was This is not necessarily marketing education, just so you understand. And I think that that threw some people, they thought I was gonna go into a whole bunch of uh, detail with um, some marketing education stuff. Uh, there's a group of people that was also very unhappy with the fact that I was not teaching some marketing education. And it was, it was pretty funny to see the very stark divide. And uh, what I want you to understand is that I have coached thousands of people in this game now. Literally, okay? And a lot of them have made money. And a lot of, I mean, a, a lot of money. Like, they hit the two comma club. And I want you to know that that these are some patterns that I've noticed inside of somebody's brain uh, to what makes them successful, okay? Especially in the last, like, year. I want you to know that these are some of the biggest lessons I've distilled down. If I could hand them off to somebody else, not stuff like, hey, this is the best way, like, uh, um, these aren't like flash in the pan things, okay? These are things that have made really um, the difference for me in my life and my business as I've moved forward. So, I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna go through seven things real fast. I'm gonna teach you guys a few of these. Number one, okay, very first thing on the list is it's all about following the framework. Okay, I, I it is like, it is this very common thread that I find when somebody is like, hey, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go start building the funnel. Steven, um, what's like the, 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 they always ask like, what are the three things? What are like, what's the checklist of things I can use to make sure that my funnel gets off the ground well? And I understand what they're asking. But the biggest thing I've noticed is that people will get distracted on uh, the creative piece of building a funnel or building a business or building a product, okay? And that's like, it's like, it's the exact opposite of what you need to actually focus on, okay? Um, um, understand that like this game when I was in college, guys, a lot of times the thing I was taught was like, make something that's brand new, something that's completely prolific, something that no one's ever seen before, and stuff that's that, that's, uh, that the market's never seen before. I will tell you that it's some risky, risky crap, and I never would follow that advice ever. Um, instead, it's all about instead uh, of falling the 80%, 80% um, of it is, is falling a framework, okay? So you understand what I'm telling you? 80% of this entire game is you just doing the pattern, okay? It's the 20% that you go and you add your little glaze on the top. And what I don't want people, what stresses me out is when people sit back and say, hey, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go in, guys, Steven, what's that little trick? What's the little thing right here? What's that? And, and they have no idea what, they're focused on the 20%, not the 80 that actually makes it work, 
You understand what I'm saying? You can get an F in funnel building. You can you can completely not be amazing at this game. You can make design that's actually really crappy and not designed, right? You could and and you can still make a ton of money and a fantastic lifestyle just by understanding the 80% framework. Okay? If you are not a creative individual, that's not a it's not a handicap. You understand what I'm saying? Step number 1, okay? Lesson number one that I want you to understand this. It, it, it's all about the framework that you follow. That's that's number one. It's all about the framework that you follow. So so here, here's 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 my uh, here's my lesson to you here. Um, if you can't name, like if you cannot audibly teach somebody or tell somebody else what framework you're following, that is the definition of feeling like your wheels are spinning. So some of you guys right now, I know that you watch this and you listen to this, you'd be like, Steven, I feel like I've been doing this game for so long, I've been trying tons of stuff. And then I'll ask people like, well, what do you sell? And they can say what they sell, but they have no idea what model they're following. Oh, I'm doing the info product model. Oh, I'm doing the e-com model. I'm not talking about funnels, I'm talking about business models, right? And if you can't actually say, this is the this is the 80% framework, the 80% model that I'm following, Guys, a lot of, for years, I mean, that is a lot of where the spinning the wheels feeling came from for me. When I was like, I feel like I would know what to do. I know what I do in that guy's business. I know what I do in that guy's business. I know what I do in that. Well, why am I not making any money, right? And it's because I would try and go on the cusp and, and out on these these little, the fringes and go to these, these places where I was trying to learn the 20%. And that's the 20% that doesn't matter. It's so much better to learn the 80% framework that causes cash, right? You guys saw the episode that I dropped out a little bit ago, right? It's I care, I care all about, only about the frameworks that cause cash by a rule, okay? And so I'm just telling you right here again, it is, if you didn't hear that episode, it's really, really powerful. It's called Cash Causing Frameworks, Cash Causing Models. And um, meaning I don't wanna have to learn the exception to the rule in order to make money. Right? And I'm not throwing rocks at the financial market, but it's one of the reasons why I don't do uh, much stuff in like stock market or stuff like that anymore, is that I feel like I had to learn exceptions to the rule in order to make money, right? Uh, same, same thing with a lot of other things I was doing out there. The thing I like about funnels is that I can learn the 80%, like just the rules, and then just do them, and I make money. I don't have to learn like these crazy flash in the pan strategies in order to make it work out. So just one one thing real quick on this also, okay? Right, it's all about the framework that you follow. What I recommend you do is that, let's say that you're gonna go in and you're trying to be the best traffic driver for Instagram ads. What I need you to do, this is this is how you start looking about the industry. This is how you, I'm gonna teach you right here how to shortcut your time to success. This is it right here. Who is yesteryear's framework master, okay? Now, I, I, let me walk through the real quick again. Who, if you sit down and actually write down a list of like who is yesteryear's framework, fame, framework master. For example, who is the person right now in existence who understands the most about sales funnels? That'd be Russell Brunson, right? And why? The reason why is because he knows yesteryear's gurus and he's learned all these gurus. Yes, right, right. The, this, the, 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 um, uh, the last generation gurus, he knows them so well, the models that they teach, the frameworks that they teach, right? right, The patterns that they tell that you need to live by. He knows them so well, and he has followed them with such intensity that he's learned how to distill down and find where the gaps are, even in their frameworks, right? Take it into his own, start living them, and then create his own framework. You understand what I'm telling you? When you can do this, guys, this is literally how I've short, I know it's one of the major reasons why I am where I am right now, is because I decided I would say like, well, I'm gonna be one, I wanna try and be one of the best funnel builders in the world. Am I? I have no idea. But the pursuit of that led me to follow Russell Brunson because he is what I call, I know it sounds cheesy, but it's what well, I call it the framework master, okay? He is the master of, the, of frameworks that cause success in funnel building. So if you're gonna go in, you're gonna be the best traffic driver for Instagram, who is yesteryear's guru's framework master, right? right? Meaning meaning they followed like, let's say like 10 different gurus, consumed all their material, gone through and taken in all their stuff, and then gone through and started applying it, saw the gaps, and then started producing their own frameworks. I know my friends that that is the reason OfferMind was such a big success. I was teaching my own frameworks. Okay? I've spent so much time in the offer creation and the funnel building space. I know where the gaps are and what is taught in different areas between learning it and actually doing it, okay? 
It only comes with thousands and thousands of students that I've brought through this. A lot of mat time, right? So anyways, that's the first lesson there. Now I'm gonna go faster through the others, but that's a big one, I just wanna explain it. If you can identify inside your market who the framework master is, that's who I call it, right? This is like, this is like the Jedi master, right? This is, this is the sensei master, whoever that is, whoever that person is, who's gone through, consumed all the gurus, right? All their frameworks, and then started getting so good at them that they started producing their own variations. That's huge, right? That does not come, you cannot fake that. And that's why I follow Russell Brunson so well on funnels. Right? Then there are other people in my life that I follow when it just comes to straight sales or straight closing or just systems. Right? And that's the same, those are same, some of the same parameters I look for when I'm, when I'm trying to get a, uh, like a coach. Right? Is this person a framework master of yesteryear's gurus? Does that make sense? Right? And the frameworks that they were all teaching. That's a big, big, huge lesson. It is literally how you take a decade and learn it in a day. Right? Is by learning the framework of that individual. All right, that's lesson number one. It's all about the framework that you follow. Lesson number two, you must be peak focused and not path focused. An individual that is path focused takes a long time to start moving, okay? I used to do a lot of backpacking and what was really frustrating, but it totally makes sense for this analogy is that you would see, right? And any of you guys who ever backpacked before, like I remember this time we were climbing up this mountain and, um, and we were on this three week backpacking trip and we were back and we were climbing and climbing. We just come out of this really cool valley and it was beautiful. It was amazing. It was an afternoon. The clouds had come in. It was slightly drizzling just a little bit, but it was still amazing out. There's a nice smell of rain, right? And as we start getting closer to the top, suddenly we would bridge this, we'd come up with this ridge. We had, we, we'd actually summit this little small ridge and then see that there was actually another summit. And then we would do it again. And then there's another summit. And then we do it again. There's another summit. And it's called the false summit. And um, guys, what I've noticed is that the individual who's focused on the peak, the path stops mattering so much, right? If I'm going to go and I'm going to build a successful internet business, right? The people that I've noticed that don't do anything in this game ever are the people who sit back, try to analyze every single path, want to start, want to see from beginning to end before they get started. And it's crap. It doesn't happen that way, okay? So uh, you gotta be peak focused, not path focused. I'm not saying you shouldn't learn as best as you can a path, but guys, everyone switches paths on the way up to the top. Everyone does, right? Oh man, I, I, I thought I, I'm gonna go build this internet business and I'm gonna go build an agency around SEO. And for a while, guys, I studied SEO. I hate SEO, okay? I never, I'm never gonna do SEO again. SEO drives me nuts. I would rather hire people to do that for me. Like in all reality, I hate it, right? But that doesn't keep me from building a cool internet business on, uh, like right online and, and getting the actual thing off the ground. But so many times people are like, well, what if I get going on this path and I don't like it? I'm like, all right, then just switch paths, but you're still going to the same peak. Okay, then what I've noticed is that when I'm coaching people and they're peak focused and not path focused, um, they're a lot harder to stop, okay? Meaning I, it, it actually is harder when I see them starting to get like mud thrown in the face or there's stuff that they're starting to come again, up against that they weren't expecting on. It's harder for that individual to be stopped because they're not worried if like something in their past suddenly gets, oh no, something unexpected, right? That happens to everybody and everything that you pursue ever. Right? This is, this, is a, this is a big, big deal. Okay, so stop obsessing so much over the path that you're supposed to go down and just start, like even if there was no path in existence, you at least know where the top of the mountain is, right? It's right there. Just start walking to it, <laughs> right? Just move. Uh, I'm very, very proud of my lady right now. Uh, she's going in and she's doing some cool seminars and things like that, and she's never done them before. And, and without me telling her, without me, there's been no encouragement. I'm not, I'm not like, you gotta do this thing. It's she's just doing it, and, uh, and I was like, I want you to know. Um, in fact, I just told her this before I walked out of here. I was like, I want you to know, I can get maybe get like five percent of the people I coach to do what you just did. And she's like, seriously? I was like, yeah. Like people just don't take action for freaking ever. <laughs> they sit back and they're like, but what's it gonna be like in session two? Man, I don't know. Like I planned offer mine the week before it started. Not before I started selling tickets, you understand? And some people look at that and be like, Steven, you guys are so risky, oh my gosh. No, we're not, okay? We're letting the market guide us. I'm letting the market guide me. And that can only happen while I'm in motion. Can't steer a parked car, people, move, right? You, can, you have got to be peak focused, not path focused. The path will change, the peak doesn't though, okay? 
Um, number three, okay, so number one, it's all about the framework you follow. Number two, you must be peak focused, not path focused. Number three, guys, it's all about leaning into your constraints. And you guys have heard me riff on this one before, but guys, the constraints that you have, they're, they're not real constraints. And when you realize that every, everything that, that is in your life that feels like is against you is actually your superpower, it's amazing how fast you can move in the game, right? And there's so much less anxiety and you stop comparing yourself to other people and you stop doing things like saying, Oh man, I'll take action once I'm in that kind of position. Oh man, I'll take action once I have that kind of a following. Well, of course they can do that because they have a huge email list, right? You stop saying crap like that when you realize that everything you've been given is a tailored, you understand what I'm saying? It is a tailored opposition just for you, right? You bad at speaking, perfect, right? Means that you're gonna learn it in a way that others that are natural at it are not gonna learn it, right? You have no money, awesome. Lean into that, right? You're now gonna have a story in the future where you're gonna turn around and say like, yeah, we had nothing. And you'll be more believable than the person that started with a lot of resources. You understand what I'm saying? Like most of you guys just aren't willing to live the hook, right? You're not willing to live your own hook in front of your audience. That's a big deal. And when you realize, we, we, we talked about that in an inner circle meeting a little bit ago. And a lady was, was talking about that and I said, you understand like, if, if, you, if you are not willing to do, I can't remember what it was, but like y- your audience is gonna call your bluff if you do not live your own hook. It's a big deal. Now, uh, anyway, number four, please, 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 for the love, build your business that changes your world before you change the world. Okay. Uh, uh, easily one of the, it's also one of the top things. A lot of this comes from me just spending time with new people in the game. Okay. Um, stop trying to build a business that changes the world. Okay. Change your world before you change the world. You understand what I'm telling you? Okay. I want you, that's why I call myself the pack, the capitalist pig guys, guys make money, right? There's nothing wrong with going out and making money. Okay. Make money, make money so much so that you change your world. Cause then you'll be in a position to change the world. How much power do you have when you have not, when you, if you're like living paycheck to paycheck, you really can't, you're very limited in the options you can take. Okay. So, so when I'm, here, here, okay, check this out. When I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna build something brand new, like we just barely launched something new about six weeks ago, right? And we launched this thing, we put it out there, it's really, really awesome. But the reason why I launched it in a position, I launched it a certain way. Okay, number one, I chose the wealth industry. Okay, I did that on purpose because people expect to spend money in the wealth industry. It's not that they don't in relationships, right? It's not that they don't in health but they particularly expect to spend money in the wealth industry. So it's an easier sell. You feel me right now? Can you guys, like if, if you're driving right now, I, rec- I, 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 I recommend to you to sit back after a while, go write this down afterwards. Okay, this is a big deal when you think about it this way. I'm gonna stack all the cards in my favor that I possibly can. I'm going to sell something in the wealth industry. I'm going to sell something that naturally has a high ticket, okay? Because then I can go out and I can sell something for two, three, four, 10, 25 grand. And it's a, that, that's a natural, normal thing. I don't have to turn up, hey, you wanna spend 25 grand on this, this free plus shipping book? People are like, no, right? I choose things that are selling for high dollar. I choose an industry, wealth, where people expect to spend money. I don't have to sell them on the fact that they need to spend money, right? There, there's an expectation for it. I also will go in and I will choose an industry This is a key move right here, okay? I will choose an industry to sell into that has been existing for a while, that has gotten so good that it continues to create new customers, right? A lot of you guys know I sell in the MLM space and that's the reason why, right? MLM's been around for freaking ever. And the reason why I sell into it is because it's been around so long, people are convinced that it's good, right? Meaning the industry creates the customers. I don't have to create a customer. They make the customer for me. Did you hear what I just said? Okay. When somebody builds a product and they turn around and they say, who should I sell it to? Wrong order. (laughs) Okay. Wrong order. The first thing I do is I look for markets, red, red, bloody red oceans that are, that have been in existence for a while that have been creating customers on its own, right? The sales message is alluring enough that it creates a customer for me. And then I just get good at figuring out what message I can send into that red ocean to pull customers back out. I didn't create the customer, I collected the customer. You understand? 
Okay, as an ocean starts to expand, as a market begins to grow, and the idea behind it gets more and more valid, the market will move from customer collection to customer creation. And when I see a red ocean, this might be getting too deep for the pod, for this podcast here, but I, just, I want you to know what, I'm, what I look for in these lessons, okay? What I'm looking for is, I'm, so I'm selling into wealth, not health, not relationships. When I'm trying to change my world and not the world, okay? I'm selling into wealth. I'm looking for a market that has been expanding long enough that customers and companies reinvest the cash they made from that market back into the same market. And I'm looking for ways to see like, oh my gosh, look, this market is so good. They're not just collecting customers from other markets now. They actually are creating customers. There's a process. The sales message is alluring enough. It's strong enough that it creates customers. Then all I got to do is learn how to sell into that market. I'd never have to worry about who to sell to again. I never have to worry about how to create a customer. I'm just collecting them. It's a lot easier. Does that make sense? Very subtle, small idea there. I had it when I was, uh, actually I was preparing for OfferMind. I was like, oh crap, that is why that works so well. <laughs> and it works super, super well. So anyway, I look for several, there's there's a lot of things that I walk through to see if it's like, is that is that ocean ready to be picked, right? Is it ready for me to sell into? Uh, is this a good product to me for me to go into? Uh, what kind of sales message? Do I see that there's a divide beginning already inside of that ocean? Are there third tier influencers rising inside of that red ocean? There's a lot of things that I run into and I'll definitely do a full episode on this, but I want you to understand like, guys, change your world, the free trend, change the world. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to pull margins out in a change the world business for quite some time. And so you end up losing steam. Guys, go get money, get rich, okay? And then turn around, I'm all about making a, an absolute sickening amount of cash and then doing cool things in the world with it that help people, okay? That's kind of my thing, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I know that that's way easier of a route than starting a nonprofit, I'm just gonna say it, okay? Than starting a nonprofit or going and change, doing your change the world business before you do the change your world business. Anyway, number one, remember it's all about the framework you follow. If you can't even name it, that's why you feel like you're spinning your wheels. You must be peak focused, not path focused. That's another way to feel like you're spinning your wheels. You're actually not attaining anything. Lean into your constraints. They are your superpower, okay? Uh, uh, that's why when someone's like, I don't have enough time or money. I'm like, bull crap, I don't believe you. I have zero sympathy for you. Change your world to free, change the world. Number five, the market will always tell you what to do, okay? Number five, the market will always tell you what to do, okay? Now, what you have to understand is that it's this game is about you learning how to be a good detective rather than a creative genius. And so when you learn how to go into an ocean and see what, what's actually going on inside of it, inside of a red ocean, and see and pull things out and have them start to guide you in the creation of a blue ocean, it is way easier to succeed in the game, right? It's actually exactly the opposite of the things I was taught, right, inside of college. And, uh, and, the, and lots, of, lots of the books that are out there today, especially on product creation and stuff like that, come up with a, a cool brand new idea. It's like, okay, but like, people don't just spend money because they say they're going to. Like, what are they actually spending money on? Not what they say they're gonna spend money on. What are they actually spending money on? And it's all about discovering a blue ocean with a red ocean customer. And uh, that's way easier to do that way. I'm gonna keep going here. Guys, you have to understand too that cash is not king, cash flow is king. I do, uh, let me say that cash is king. Uh, sorry, cash is not king. Cash flow is king. Okay. Um, uh, too many times I see somebody hit the two comic club award, and and they'll do it in an area. I mean, they'll make a, a million dollars through the funnel, but they themselves will get this big payout, and then it's not sustainable, and then they die. I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm saying it's not security, <laughs> right? I look for I look for opportunities. I look for right in every. I have two value ladders right now that I'm building or two businesses. I think of businesses as value ladders with systems in it, right? And uh, there's two different value ladders that I'm building right now. And in both of them, there is, there's acquisition processes, there's, there's, uh, there's ascension processes for the customer, and then there's monetization cu systems uh, um, for the customer as well, right? So I'm ascending, I'm monetizing, and I'm, uh, uh, and I'm actually acquiring customers inside the value ladder. However, it is incomplete without the fourth one, which is continuity. In each one of the businesses that I build, right, and it's not always super clear before I start, but I want you to know that I'm always looking for a way to add a continuity-based thing into each thing that I build. Is there a way for me to gain a monthly consistent check from my customers, no matter how big, no matter no matter how small, um, from from my customers? 
right? That continuity is like what lets you build everything. Bringing in this huge cash influx is cool, but it's freaking scary if it never comes again. And so I don't look for businesses where it's like, boom, tons of money all at once. I'm not saying I don't do that, but I'm saying it's not, I don't, I, I don't let my emotional hair down and go like, oh my gosh, like I'm totally set now, if that's the case, because that, that's freaky. And so I look for ways to build my business and build my stuff so that I have cash flow. And when I have cash flow, when things are actually getting off the door and getting rocking, like, it's, it's a, that's a huge deal, you understand? That, that's actually what lets you build the business, right? Not the funnel, I'm saying the business. The business is what supports the funnel. Right, a business is systems, right? Because of cash flows that we have, um, I can go hire a team, which is exactly what I did, right? I can take cash flows and I can go, I can hire out uh, uh, different pieces of the funnel build or hire out different pieces of the content machine, right? We now have, I think 10 people on the content team now between the two shows that I've got, 10, okay? It's not cheap, okay? The reason I can do it is not because of cash. I can do it because of cash flow. And so I'm looking for businesses where I can get money coming in. The funnel breaks even on the customer coming in. I can upsell them. And then somewhere in there is a continuity-based thing. And when I have that, I have a business, okay? Fourth thing, or sorry, uh, um, oh, I saw the number four. Number seven, okay, final thing here is confidence equals competence. Okay, if you do not feel competent in the funnel game, if you do not feel confident inside of the uh, funnel building world, inside of business or whatever, you gotta learn more. Okay, but you have to do it in a way where you're not like, okay, I don't learn anything in SEO ever or social media posting ever because I don't wanna learn it. I don't wanna know it. It's not what I need in order to solve the next problem in front of me, okay? I'm starting to tell, like, I hope you understand this. If you can't name the framework that you're following, if you can't name the model you're building, if you can't name the problem that you're trying to solve, okay? If you can't name that, that problem, you are gonna feel like you're spinning your wheels. That's the best way for you to feel like nothing's happening in your life, okay? And so the, it, what I'm saying is if you can't name the problem you're trying to solve, you're gonna learn in a very sporadic method. Did you, hear what I, did you hear that? Like, if you can't name, like, yeah, this is the problem I'm trying to solve. On my whiteboard right here on the other side, there is, um, I have two questions I'm trying to answer right now. That's it, that's it. I know that any other question that pops up, it's either something I need to solve on the way to solving the big problem, or it's not a real question, okay? There's two problems I'm trying to solve right now. I can name them, that's it. I'm not gonna name it on the podcast right here, okay? okay? But they're written, they're on the board. I know exactly what I'm trying to learn for. I don't just learn generally. I don't just learn for the sake of, oh, it's good to just learn. No, it's not. Guys, that is the best way to make your brain feel clouded and oh my gosh, there's so much in there and it will, it will literally clog your mental shelf space, okay? Uh, guys, these are like the seven lessons I've noticed and I've learned, and especially in the last like three years, especially in the last year, okay, being out on my own, as I've looked back on the things that have actually made the big adjustments in my life, that's them, okay? Uh, it's all about the framework, okay? And if you can't, if you, if you cannot name the framework you're following, the 80% proven will make money framework, you're gonna feel like you're spinning your wheels, right? You're gonna fire off your next funnel and not know why, okay? Um, uh, you have got to be peak focused, not path focused. I, 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 follow, I find the framework and I understand that some things on the way to following it, I, I, it's just, it's going to be hard for me to name until I'm there. I better not stress out about it. Let me just start moving. Let me just do it, right? Lean into the constraints. Anything that I feel, this is, whatever those, specifically this has to do with the, the feelings and emotions of the individual. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. There's no way. I can't speak. I can't talk. I don't know how to write copy. Blah, blah, blah. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, and every time I've noticed that, that that's usually because somebody's starting to believe their constraints are actual constraints. And they're not, okay? They're superpowers. But not until you flip the way you're seeing them. Not until you're willing to feel a little pain, maybe a little pressure, a slight amount of discomfort in order to push through, okay? Uh, change your world before you change the world. That's a huge one. Um, guys, changing the world. I wanna change the world. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I wanna change the world. I don't know exactly how, but right now I'm changing my world. And funny enough, that changes a lot of other people's worlds as well, okay? And, and the pursuit of me changing my world, right? It's been changing a lot of other worlds, but it's also been giving me more in a position of power and increasing my capacity to change the world. I know that those projects will come up soon. In fact, I can kind of feel they will be. But uh, right now, 
It doesn't matter, right? I'm trying to change my world before the world. Um, guys, the market will always tell me what to do. I totally agree with that, totally believe that. Uh, there's a lot of examples behind that. This is not really a platform for me to go through too much of that. Cash is not king. Cash flow is king. Okay, big old wins are awesome, but please build something that's sustainable. Um, and then confidence equals competence. Stop learning generally and for the sake of it. It is the best way to feel like you're going nowhere, okay? Anyway, guys, I just, I, I super appreciate you. I, I hope you know that. Every one of you guys who are listening right now, I do, I like, I love you. I want you to know that I, I, I feel such a gratitude for what it is we all get to do. We have the funnest game ever and we have the tools to play it. We have the tools to play it well. So anyways, if you guys have enjoyed this episode, those are the seven things that I've learned that have really turned the dial for me in the last, especially year. And I just want to show them off to you guys there. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Please rate and subscribe and uh, love to see you in the next episode. Bye guys. Woo! Hey, there's more marketing resources than there are sands of the sea, am I right? Okay, maybe not, but there's a lot. How do you know if you're paying for good ones? Recently, I went through my business bank statement and I counted 51 internet tools and resources that I use to run my business every day and actually keep my team size small. If you wanna see the list, I actually filmed an individual video teaching you why I use each tool and the strategy behind it. And then I dropped the link straight to the source right below it. If you wanna see the list and see what you can use yourself, go to bestmarketingresources.com. That's bestmarketingresources.com.